A familiar sight across Wales, horses left to roam and fend for themselves. Keep still, keep still. But not always in the places where you expect to find them. This little falls out again. Right down there is a really busy road, so it's really dangerous for both people and the horse. Horses which have been dumped, abandoned or roaming around desperate for food are causing a major headache for the authorities. Excuse me, can you just... No, 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 can I'm going get my horse. No, it's my horse. It's costing hundreds of thousands of pounds and there are fears for public safety and the animals' welfare. These poor horses will need to have somebody look after them and perhaps putting them to sleep will be the only choice we have. It's a wonder nobody's been killed yet. Sadly, when that does happen, then they will confront the issues. Tonight, we ask if the law is failing to stop this as we investigate the mayhem across Wales and who could be behind it. From Newport in the east to Pembrokeshire in the west, horses are causing chaos. I've been investigating the problem of stray, abandoned and dumped Welsh Gypsy cobs since the beginning of this year. I'm going to try and find out what's caused this, who's involved and what's been done to tackle it. And this is where it all began in the Vale of Glamorgan. January and more than 30 horses are desperately searching for food. There's virtually no grass left and they resort to eating young trees. Some don't make it. They'd been dumped on land owned by the Woodland Trust near Wick in the Vale of Glamorgan by an unidentified owner. This type of action has been dubbed fly grazing. And it wasn't a one-off. Days later, I was reporting from Cosmiston, where more animals have been abandoned on council land. One of the hotspots for fly grazing and horses wandering around, looking for food wherever they can find it, is here in the Bridge End area. Oh, there you come. Keep still. Keep still. <laughs> This video was captured on the Kevin Glass estate in Bridgend. And nearby at Brintillion Comprehensive School, horses are a constant concern. These horses often find their way into school grounds, causing what we've been told is thousands of pounds worth of damage. And of course, the mix of wild animals and young children can spell danger. We've just seen a group of 11 horses that have been uh, galloped out of the school grounds here by uh, some people who've turned up after a, a call to tell them that they were on the school grounds. We're now pursuing them up the road in Brintillion, up the main high street, through a very built-up area. The horses managed to find their way back onto the school grounds. Then the two people involved in rounding up the horses stopped to challenge us. We're filming the horses. Because you're with the horses. A bit unusual. Well, you are with the horses. We just saw you trying to round them up. Are they yours? You're not rounding them up. Oh, I thought you were. The driver of the 4x4 is Tony Price, the son of one of the biggest horse breeders in the UK. His name, Tom Price, will crop up again in my investigations. The head teacher is so concerned with the problem, he's meeting with the Bridge End MP, Madeline Moon. He estimates the cost to the school due to the horses, mostly for new fencing, at £50,000. Well, you could have used the money to improve the quality of the school environment right. for the pupils. Yes. Horses get onto the school's playing field so often that Sports Day was cancelled last year and rugby lessons are regularly called yeah. off. Horses tend to come here through the front gates this mm. time, through the front gates, and are here three, four, five, six or seven horses at a time. Um, to run, will go quietly towards the horses and they no doubt will be kicked one of these days and that is a real fear yeah. of mine. What we've got are horse owners who are irresponsibly 
driving down the M4 and cherry picking where they can drop off and just deposit their horses in fields, often late at night, 11, 12 o'clock at night, and people wake up and suddenly they got a new problem in their community of large, wild and uncontrolled horses. It doesn't take us long to find more horses. This time they've been wandering on a road just a mile from the school. We only really just had a yeah. phone call come from my stick. Yeah. Uh, down to do it, to round them up, to send them back to me. Yeah. That's all. And uh, we're going back to get some uh, fencing out to body of that up and hopefully keep them contained in there. Is they causing a problem for motorists, were they? Yeah, well, the police have been there. They've broke all the roads off here. Yeah. When they come out, they've been all over the area. Nobody quite knows the scale of the problem, but it's estimated there are hundreds, possibly thousands of horses across South and West Wales, which are allowed to roam freely, causing all manner of mayhem. It's been going on for years, but appears to have got much worse recently. Last year, for example, we could expect 25 incidents per month involving horses being reported to police. They predominantly have been of, of an animal welfare nature. Um, last month, 497 incidents. Now, part of that will be because we've responded positively, we've engaged with our communities. There are many reasons why this seems to be getting worse now. Keeping a horse is a very expensive business, and fewer people are buying them, driving the values down. They need to have passports and microchips, and that's adding to the already costly business of owning a horse. One of the reasons why this has been so difficult to resolve is because so many agencies are involved. Local authorities, the police, the RSPCA, governments in Wales and England, all with different responsibilities and it all costs money. Who's going to pay that cost? What we can't allow to continue to happen is that it's the taxpayer. We've got to find a more efficient and effective way of being able to trace the animals back to their owners and making those owners accountable in courts and paying the fines that they should be paying to dissuade them from carrying on this way. In addition to the enforcement costs to authorities, it's also charities who have to bear the burden and help pick up the pieces. This is one of the lucky ones, Hero, in fine health now, but only after a massive and costly rescue operation in Newport. There was absolutely nothing in the field for them to eat, and there were about 35 of them. They were very hungry and so we decided we'd take some hay down just so they were at least not too hungry. And whilst we were there, uh, one of the girls that were with us came rushing up, quick, quick, there's a horse in the ditch. And there, sure enough, was this poor horse that was in the ditch with the water with barbed wire tangled around his back legs and had obviously been there a while. It was February, it was a day, a very cold day. And so we called the fire brigade because we couldn't get him out. It was, he was, too, you know, too too big for us to do. And then when we got him out, we didn't think he was going to live. He just lay there. And we managed to get him going and got him on his feet and got him into our trailer. Let me go and have a very quick, let me see if I can go and Are find you. Go you. While we are filming at the charity's farm in Monmouthshire, a call asking for help comes in. There's a two to three month old foal that um, they can't trace the mother. It's in a field with some other mares that um, are stopping it from eating. Uh, the vet has been called out and the vet has been signed it over to the council. So now the council have asked us if we will collect it because they fear that it's not going to survive where it is. A team from the charity set off to try and rescue the foal and they invite us to join them. But will they succeed? It's not only charities who have to bear the cost. This is from Orford Park. Um, it backs onto the scrubland um, outside Roverway. Local councils are spending hundreds of thousands of pounds to tackle this, and in Cardiff, they've employed Wales's first horse warden. Now how did you get in here, matey? Because the council have just spent a fortune on new fencing. Let's just go see if he's going to be approachable. 
The horse shouldn't be here, and Lucy suspects it's been deliberately placed here to graze and doesn't have a registered owner. Have you had one of these on before? Yeah, should we find out? I'll make a call to Rumley Station to let them know that um, he's been seized, where he's been seized from. Um, if an owner comes forward, um, there's a fine to pay in order to have the horse back as long as they can prove the horse is theirs with a passport. If they can't, then we'll go down the road of looking for another home for him. Oh, you're a nightmare, seriously. Lucy has called the police for backup, but before the horse is removed, she wants to check if its owner is in the area. My horse, they, 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 someone's loose out the stable there. Have you got a passport for it? Passport? No, but I can get one for it. All right, this oh, horse has actually oh, been sorry. seized by Cardiff Council. It's obviously uh, not oh, allowed oh, to be on this park. It's been seized. It's my horse. Someone's took it out of my stable. Like. No, oh, you're no. Really no. Excuse me, can you just... No, 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 no. Can I'm, you I'm not? Get my horse. No, it's my horse. Get on. The horse is led away by a young man claiming to be its owner. Lucy calls the police again to find out where they are. At the end of the day, I, you know, I can't fight them. Um, again, it's the issue sort of with the police is that they just don't respond um, time after time. Um, however, they have just said that they are going to send a, a unit out now, which is a bit late. Cardiff Council spend about £100,000 every year on tackling their horse problem, and they believe they're winning. But in other areas, it's still causing major concerns, like here in the Vale of Glamorgan. Damage to this community wood in Wick, caused by fly-grazing horses, at the beginning of the year has been estimated at between five and £10,000. Clearly, the horses were eating everything they could get hold of uh, while they were here. When they finished the grass, uh, they basically started to eat the trees. The Woodland Trust put up a 14-day abandonment notice, which meant the horses' owners had to remove the animals within two weeks, or they could be rehomed, sold or put to sleep. All of the sanctuaries were full. No one would accept them. Uh, and we were faced with the prospect of having to have, you know, these beautiful animals destroyed. But shortly after the notice ran out, the horses were spirited away in the dead of night. Fly grazing when horses are placed on private land, effectively allowing the animals to eat for free, is not a new phenomenon. When he's not leading the Conservatives in the National Assembly, Andrew R.T. Davis farms hundreds of acres in the Vale of Glamorgan. A couple of years ago, he was the victim of fly grazing too. It was by chance, if you like, that we saw them quite early on on the property uh, and we were able to take action. And if they'd been there any length of time, they could have been on the A48, uh, which, as many people know, is the main arterial road between Cardiff and Pagend, uh, or they could have broken into residential property and caused quite considerable damage. And uh, being the owners of the land that the livestock would have come from, uh, we would have been the ones, ironically, responsible for it, even though they weren't our livestock. He says problems caused by horses have been going on for years. And he says it's time something was done to tackle it once and for all. We've seen pictures on the TV of horses dead in fields. We've seen pictures of horses in very poor condition. That is something in the 21st century here in South Wales we shouldn't allow to continue. Dozens of horses were illegally dumped on land here next to Cardiff Airport. And there are even reports of many fly grazing on this roundabout, causing an obvious hazard for motorists. The problem became so acute that the Vale of Morgan Council had to round up 68 of them which were then transported to various animal welfare charities across the UK. And this is where 23 of those horses ended up, nearly 300 miles away at Red Wings Animal Sanctuary in Norfolk. Um, and there's a whole host of things that can spread from horse to horse. And what we're keen to do is just protect our own herd from the unknown, from horse to horse. Nick is going to show me the horses which were brought here from Roos. These ponies are very young, so they're around about six months of age, some of them younger, some of them older. 
Um, generally, horses are still suckling from their mother at six months of age, and they are largely independent, but not completely. So in my opinion, these guys were too young to be on that field. Sadly, there were three of them that were um, not really going to cope with uh, the, the journeys to the various charities. Um, they were sort of succumbing to respiratory conditions, which uh, sadly necessitated us, uh, you know, the only humane act.